1-800-529-5465. Let's go to Sandra in Queens. Sandra. Hey, Brad. How you doing? Good. What's up? Good. I have a question for my sister. Um, yeah. She I want to know, can her citizenship, what are the chances that your citizenship can be revoked? Because she, um, she, she's, she's swearing for her citizenship. But she. Um, what did she do that you would be concerned that her citizenship would be revoked? Maybe you don't want to tell me. Um, she lied on her application. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So your citizenship can be revoked if you lied on your application. Absolutely, they would have to go through a denaturalization process, which is not which is not an easy thing to do. The government has to b- literally sue you and have a federal court judge denaturalize you and discover that what they have to be able to prove is that you lied on the application and they would have to discover this lie. We don't know who you are. We don't know who your sister is. Um, they would have to prove that they lied on the application for citizenship. And as a result of this lie, you gained your citizenship unlawfully. Had the government know the real truth, you would not have become a citizen. They used to do it years ago. The only times you would ever see in the past that they would try to denaturalize somebody is you would find like, you know, this guy and and they don't exist anymore, Nazis. They all died off from World War II. But you would always see in the news. I remember, you know, 10, 20, 30 years ago, there was always like every couple of years they would find like, uh, you know, this guy is this really nice guy. He finishes furniture in Dayton, Ohio. He stays to himself. He's been living by himself for 30 years. He's very lovely. And then all of a sudden they discover he was a Nazi and killed like 10 million Jews. So uh, then they denaturalize him and send him back. You've seen those stories. Just recently under Donald Trump, just recently under Donald Trump, he started, they started going back through citizenship applications and found that people who were convicted of aggravated felonies that they got past, they got past, um, they got past the immigration service. The immigration service didn't realize that they had aggravated felonies that barred them from becoming citizens. And they went and actually just started processing the denaturalization process of about 60 or 80 people. That none of them are my clients. I just read about it in the newspaper. Um, I, to tell you the truth, denaturalization is one of the things probably one of the only immigration cases I've actually never handled. I've never had somebody actually come to me and say the government, not that I don't know what to do or can't handle it, uh, but I don't know. I've never actually gone through that process. It would be a big burden to overcome for the government to, to prove that you lied on this application and but for the lie, you wouldn't be a citizen. Okay. All right. And if your sister has a concern, I wouldn't say any more because right now, and remember that, and this goes to everybody out there, When you call me on this show, there's no attorney-client privilege. You want to know why there's no attorney-client privilege? Do you want to know why? No. Because there's non-attorneys listening. Okay. So as soon as a non-attorney listens, there's no privilege. If you come in and talk to me and we're in a private room and there's nobody else listening, it's just I'm the attorney and you, it's privileged conversation. All right? All right. So I'll tell her to call. Tell her to call me. Yes. Okay. All right. 1-800-529-529. Five four six five. Go to Lisa in Brooklyn. Lisa. Hi. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good evening. What's up? I have a friend, and mm-hmm. her brother wants to file for her. He's a citizen. Right. But what she wants to know is if um she got married and he already put in those documents for her. What could possibly happen after that? What do you mean? The brother wants to file for her, but she already got married. No, not yet. But if she, if it so happens during that time that she's waiting. Oh, oh okay, I understand. So the bro- so right now she's out of status, and the brother wants to file for her, and yeah. he, she says, "Okay, we'll do it." But it's going to be a long wait. And then mm-hmm. what happens? Like maybe in six months, nine months, twelve months, I get married. You can have multiple cases going, whichever case comes in first. So by all means, right now if she has nobody to marry. She's not in love. Uh, mm-hmm. Go go have the brother file. It's better than nothing. Amen. Okay. All right. Then. Okay. Let's say six months from now, nine months from now, 12 months from now, three years from now, whatever it is, she falls in love, she can always switch it over, have the husband file for her. No problem. Okay, cool. All right, cool. Thank you. Thank you. 1-800-529-5465. Let's go to Garnett. Garnett. Yes, good evening to you, Brad. Good evening. What's up? Yes. Um, my wife, um, I got married in America here. Uh, my wife filed for me, and I got my green card and everything. Mm-hmm. But she also filed for my son. 
Uh-huh. And I um, search the, the thing today and find out that they said they send the, the thing to the visa processing thing. Wait, wait, so one second, one second, one second, one second. You got married and your wife filed for your son and she pros- and she sent the thing to the thing? Is that what you're saying to me? No, she sent the... She sent the, um, the application. She sent an application, application. to to the uh, to the National Benefit Center to get the I-130 approved. Your son's in another country, I assume. Right, okay. he's in Jamaica. Okay, so fine. They, approve what, it. they, they approved it. it. Good. Then what? So they are saying when I check the status, the case status today, it is saying that they send the the, the application number to the processing state for the visa to be processed. To the processing state. You mean to the national to the national visa center? Right. Okay. Good. So the, my question is, how long does does that take? If okay, so you're gonna it, from eight weeks from the, you should get from eight weeks from the approval, you should get a notification from the National Visa Center saying, do you have an attorney? Do you have an agent who's going to represent you? Or are you going to represent yourself? You fill that out. You send it back. A few weeks later, you should get a fee package uh, to pay to pay the fee bills to do the affidavits of support and to submit all the documents that you need to complete the case before the case gets forwarded to Jamaica, police certificates, things of that nature. Okay, Do that so as quickly as possible, and as soon as they get that back, it's about two months for them to transfer the case to Jamaica, and another two to you know four to six weeks to schedule an appointment. So if you do everything really fast, it should be somewhere between five to six months. Okay, so the best, I have to get a paper from them. That's the first thing. Correct. Okay, then I'll check with my, my, my person that put it in. The person, I'm a lawyer yes. that put it in. I'll check with him if he gets any paper. Wonderful. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. All right. one eight zero zero five two nine five four six five. Let's go to Marshall Lee in the Bronx. Marshall Lee. Hi. Hey, how are you? I'm fine. Thank you. I have a question. My question mm-hmm. is... I have been married from 2014. I have three years tax paper with my husband. I want to know if I could file for my citizenship this year, even if I don't file with him. How long have you had your green card? I have the 10 year now. Uh, I've gone my three years with it. Um, I have it. When did you get your conditional? When, when did you get your conditional green card? Uh, December. Of what? Of last year. No, that was your permanent green card. When did you get the conditional? When did you first oh, become a permanent? December resident? 2014. December 2014. Yeah. Is that what you said? December 2014? Yes. Okay. So if you got your green card in December 2014, and you can you can file your citizenship based on three years of marriage, but you got to prove that you are in a bona fide relationship with your spouse at this moment. And what yes. is a bona fide relationship you share in the financial obligations of the marriage it's filing a joint tax return so if you have not filed the joint tax return you have not you're not you're not in a financial relationship with uh with your spouse at least that's what the immigration service says so then you would have to wait until december 2019 when you've had your green card for five years and it doesn't matter whether you're with your husband or not okay thank you all right all right thank you you're welcome. One eight zero zero five two nine five four six five. So let's go to Sonia in Waterbury, Connecticut. Sonia. Hi. Good hey, evening, what's up, Brad? Good evening. Um, I have my niece. Her mom died in Jamaica. Right. I have her here in the U.S. with me. She came on a visitor's visa. She's only ten. I don't think I want to send her back because the conditions down there are not so good. So where, where, I where, do? where is she? She's, she's here now. Yeah. And what country is she from? Jamaica. And how old is she? Ten. Okay. Where are her biological parents? Her mom died. Her, her mom, father, we don't know. Her yeah, mom died. Know where her, dad her mom died, right. and we don't know where dad is. The right. easiest thing you can do, all right, you live, in, you live in Connecticut. We have an office, by the way, on Congress Street in Hartford. I okay? heard. I all heard. Right. <laughs> so this is, what, this is what we're going to do. You go, go up to Congress Street in Hartford. You're going to see mm-hmm. Marina there, or you can see me, or talk to me on the phone, yeah. whatever you want. We're going yeah. to bring you into family court in Connecticut, okay, uh-huh. in Waterbury. And, uh-huh. and what we're going to say is we're going to get guardianship for you for this child. And uh-huh. what we're going to do is prove that the mother passed away to the judge and the father disappeared. And if we can okay. prove those two things, we're going okay. to get the judge to give a special order 
And the special mm-hmm. order will say that it's not in this child's best interest to be returned to Jamaica to nobody because she's basically okay. been abandoned. So now okay. you have this special order. It's not in the child's long-term interest to be returned to Jamaica. You're her legal guardian. This is the fastest way to do it. This can be done, okay. literally, this whole guardianship can be done in, in 12 weeks. Once you okay. have the legal guardianship, once you have the legal guardianship, okay. she can file on her own for her green card as a special immigrant juvenile. Okay, oh, somebody really? who's been abandoned in America and now you become their legal guardian. It's so much faster than going through an adoption process. I mean, literally, oh. she can get her green card in seven, eight, nine months, 10 months. Now, after oh, she gets no. her green card, if you say, you know what, I still want to adopt her, you can go through an adoption process or you can just be her guardian, whatever you choose. But that's the fastest way to get her, her green card. Yeah, no. Okay, so uh, do I have to be a naturalized citizen no. for all this? No. No, okay, no you can be a green card holder and do this. Okay, because I'm coming in for my naturalization. No, you can, you can be a green card holder and do this. It's perfectly fine. Oh, okay. All right, okay. hold on one second. Right, thank you. You're great. Thank so we, you. got, we got good news for her. Hold on. All right, okay. and uh, the phone calls keep coming in. Let's go to Petrina in New York. Petrina. Hello, good evening. Good evening, what's up? Um, I'm calling about, um, I'm from Jamaica, and my son has leukemia, and we are here like uh-huh. two years now doing right. medical um, treatment, which he's still on, but we do extensions. But um, we are, my sister has um, filed for me, so time ago and I'm wondering if after the treatment if going back home if it will affect um, us no it should not she had to put in a petition when, when, for us. when did she put in the petition for you I think it was sometime around 2013 oh you got a long way to go no but it won't affect you okay all right okay. and I hope your son's I, feeling better is he doing better yeah. he's doing better good. Good. he's good. back in School good, can good, go back in good, the good, thank God. Good, doing good, good, good. All right, yeah, but it won't affect you as long as you don't overstay on the visa. Keep getting the extensions. Yeah, we keep okay. putting put the extension. Okay, wonderful. All right, all right, hold on if you need help. All right, so there you have it. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for all of your support here.